This is a basic introduction to balancing equations for GCSE students. So I want you to imagine that we're doing an experiment and I have um, a scale here that's measuring the mass of this gas jar and I've got a candle in here that's um, burning. Now I want you to um, believe, slightly suspend belief, that this candle is going to keep burning until um, the candle runs out and uh, that there's going to be enough oxygen in there for that to happen. Um, but no gases or anything can go in or anything can come out. So this candle here is um, flickering away. I want you to think about what will happen to the mass as the candle has burnt out. Now, some of you may well have already seen this. Um, the surprising thing that happens is that the mass stays exactly the same. A lot of students expect that after the candle has finished burning, that there will be a decrease in mass because the, the candle is burnt away, or that there will be an increase in mass because of any ash um, or soot that's been collected. This is all because of the law of the conservation of mass which says you have to have the same amount at the end as you did in the beginning, even if it looks different. And this is what we need to use for balancing equations. So over here, I have a compound with two stars in it, and over here, I have a compound with two circles in it. And after the reactions happened, I have a compound that is star circle, star circle. An easy way for us to write this is two star circle. Instead of just writing star circle, star circle, two star circle is much easier for us to write. So we need to be able to balance equations um, and there are some really um, nice ways to do this. So I always like my students to draw a line down the middle just below where the reaction arrow is and then make a little list of all of the things that are on each side of the equation. So here I've got stars, circles and squares. Now the first thing we need to do is just count them. So here I have one um, star, I have one circle and I have one two squares. Here I have one two circles, I have one two squares, stars sorry, and I have one square. So we can see this isn't balanced because here I have one star and here I have two stars, here I have one circle and here I have two circles, here I have two squares and here I have one square. So I need to do something to this to make it a bit more balanced. So I'm going to start on this side here first of all because there's only one thing here that I need to change to fix it up a little bit. So what I need to do is to... Um, increase this bit here so that there are more more uh, circles more squares on the other side so the basic first thing I'm going to do is just pop a nice two in front of that there now I can scoop this out and start from the beginning again so I have one two circles but because I've put this 2 in front here, I have to times that by 2, so that gives us 4. I still have 1, 2 stars. I have 1 square here, but remember we need to times it by 2, so that's 1 times 2, so that equals 2. So I only have the same number of squares, but I've got a different number of circles and I've got a different number of stars. So the, the first thing that we can do... Well, the next thing we can do is look at the number of circles. So over here I have the one circle, and over here I now have um, four circles. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pop a full in front of that there, scribble it out, and have a go at counting again. So my squares are just the same. I have two squares. I have one circle here, but I've just times that by four. So that's one times four, that equals four. And I have um, one star here, but I've just popped four there. So let me see one, oops, one times four, which equals four. So you can see now we're getting close. We've got the same number of squares, we've got the same number of circles, but we've got a different number of stars. So I've got four stars over this side, and I've got two stars over this side. Somehow I need to turn this two 
into a four. And the easiest way for me to do that is just to pop two in front of there. And I'm not going to do the whole thing over again because the only thing I've changed is this bit here. I've got one two stars and I'm timesing it by two. Two times two equals four. So we can see and I have four stars on this side, four stars on this side, four circles on this side, four circles on this side, two squares on this side, two squares on this side. It takes a little bit of trial and error to get to, to do, but once you get used to it, you'll find them nice and easy. And so here is an actual equation that you might get given in the exam, exactly the same way. So I'm just going to draw a line down the middle here, and I'm going to list things that I've got. So I've got hydrogen and I've got oxygen. We can see this little number here tells us how many we've got. So I've got two hydrogens, and I've got two oxygens. Here I've got two hydrogens. But there's no number here, so that means I've only got one oxygen. So you can see that my number of oxygens aren't balanced, and that's where I need to start. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just to pop a 2 in there and squiggle this number out here. So 2 times 1 is 2. So that means my oxygens are balanced. I have a 2 here and I have a 2 here, so that means I have 2 times 2 equals 4 for my hydrogens. So I can see my oxygens are balanced, but I have 2 hydrogens here and 4 hydrogens here, so I need to balance, increase this number of hydrogens here. So I'm just going to pop 2 in front of there, scribble this out, still the same number of oxygens, that's still 2. Here I have 2 hydrogens and 2 in front, so that is 2 times 2 equals 4. So on this side I have four hydrogens, and this side I have four hydrogen that's balanced. Here I have two oxygens, and here I have two oxygens. So that's balanced as well. So here we have nitrogen and hydrogen being turned into ammonia. We treat this in exactly the same way, draw a line straight down the middle. Nitrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen. So this little number here tells me that I have two nitrogens. This little number here tells me that I have two hydrogens. No number here, so that means I only have one nitrogen. But a three here tells me I have three hydrogens. So we can see that everything is unbalanced here. In this situation, you can just do a little bit of trial and error. So the first thing that I'm going to try is just popping a two in there, counting again, and see what happens. So no number here means I've got one of them and a two. So one times two equals 2. Here I have 3 times 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. So now we can see that the nitrogens aren't ba are balanced. We've got 2 and we've got 2. But we've got 3 hydrogens and we've got 6 hydrogens over this side. So I need to do something to the hydrogens over this side to increase them. And I want to get from 2 up to 6. The easiest way to get from 2 up to 6 by multiplying is to pop a 3 in front of there. So I have 2 hydrogens, I have 3 lots of them, so that is 2 times 3 equals 6. Here copper and oxygen are making copper oxides. So my light goes down the middle. Copper, oxygen, copper, oxygen and at the moment I have one over this side and two oxygen and one copper and one oxygen. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at my oxygens. I need to increase the number of oxygens over this side so I'm just going to pop a two in front of there, cross those out and look at it again. So I've got two coppers, I've got two oxygens. My oxygens are now balanced but my coppers are unbalanced and I see the easy thing for me to do is to put a two in front of there like that and everything, let me just check that properly, is now balanced. Sodium and chlorine here being turned into sodium chloride. Again, lying down the middle, sodium chlorine, sodium chlorine. I have one sodium and I have two chlorines and I have one sodium and I have one chlorine over this side. 
So my chlorines are balanced. Uh, what I'm going to do is pop a 2 in front of there to try and fix that. And I have 2 sodiums and 2 chlorines. Now my sodium, chlorines are balanced but my sodiums are unbalanced. So I can just put a 2 in front of there. That makes 2 there and 2 there. And everything is nicely balanced. Slightly more complicated one for us to finish on here. We have sodium and water being turned to sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. This is a, a great reaction. If you haven't seen it, go and check out my video on that. It's really pretty, really good to look at. It's a bit more complicated because we've got three things going on. We've got sodium, we've got hydrogen, we've got oxygen. We've got one sodium, we've got two hydrogens and we've got one oxygen. We've got one sodium, we've got three hydrogens and we've got one oxygen. I really don't like having um, e uh, odd numbers. I like to try and make things um, nice and even. So the first thing I'm going to do to try get rid of this lone hydrogen over here by itself to turn this into an even number is I'm actually going to put a 2 on this side, um, increasing the number of hydrogens. So now I have two uh, sodiums. I have four hydrogens and I have two oxygens. You can see balancing even numbers is a lot, lot easier. So looking at these hydrogens now, I've got two on this side, I've got four on this side, and I've got a nice little two there. So I can just pop a two in front of that. I still have my one sodium, but I have four hydrogens and I have two oxygens. So you now you can see that my hydrogens and my oxygens are balanced. The last thing I need to do is to balance my sodiums by putting a two in front of there. Now just as a last little tip, um, this is only going to work for the easy equations, so we're talking C1, um, and they're the ones towards the beginning of the paper in C1. But if you really, really can't work it out, if you've tried and tried and tried, you might have noticed from this video that the answer is generally 2. If you promise me you can't work it out, you have tried, just write down 2. Don't leave any gaps. And what they'll do in the exam is they'll generally give you some little dots for you to fill in the answer so that you don't have to go around um, working out which bits need to be balanced. Only fill, only put in answers in the spaces where there are dots. Do not try and squeeze something in there because it won't work. Thanks for watching, I really hope this is helpful. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. Share to help your friends get better grades. Any comments, corrections, questions or requests down below please.